This is Hallow Monster by Clementine Beauvoir and Macy Paradise Shearing. While I'm playing on my own in the park, Mum calls to me from her bench. I know what she's going to say. Go and play with that little boy over there, the one in the sandpit with the spade. He's all on his own. Go and say hello. I hate, hate, hate saying hello to little boys in sandpits. After all, my mother wouldn't like it if I did the same thing to her. Go and talk to that lady over there. She must be bored with only pigeons to talk to. I bet she's really friendly. I can't imagine my mum saying hello to people she doesn't know. In fact, she often tells me not to talk to strangers. Yet she's never seen that little boy before and she wants me to go and play with him. She thinks he's perfectly safe, but I'm not so sure. What if that little boy isn't really a little boy at all? What if he's a monster in disguise? What if I say hello to the monster and he pulls me down into his secret cave under the sand? What if his cave is already full of other children whose parents had told them the same thing? Go and play with that little boy. I don't think Mum would be happy if I disappeared under the sand forever and went to live with the monster in his huge underground home. The cave would be full of lost children like me. We'd have to look after his pet moles and clean his floor and comb his fur and cook his horrible, slimy dinner. I'd need to think of a clever plan to escape. I'd invent a code that the monster couldn't read, and I'd write on the wall so the other kids could see it. The message would say, Tonight we're getting out of here. Meet me at midnight in the corridor near the ant's nest. At midnight we'd arrive with our spades, ready to dig. Eddie and Lily, the two strongest kids, would dig a hole as big as a bear, and we'd follow behind. But, just as we were getting near the surface, the monster would wake up with a growl and would race to get out, of, get out of the tunnel alive. When we reached the top, the monster would be right behind us, giving a mighty roar. But what if we dig the tunnel in the wrong place? Instead of coming out near the swings in the park, we might end up in the Black Panther's cage at the zoo. And just after midnight is the time when panthers start to get hungry. Things could get a bit dangerous, but luckily for us, the panther doesn't like the taste of humans and her favourite food is actually fresh monster meat. So we'd hide in the corner of the cage and the panther would wait for the monster to jump out of the tunnel. It wouldn't be a pretty sight, but we'd peek between our fingers if we dared. After the panther had finished, her huge dinner, she'd spend all night telling us stories about the jungle. We'd feel sorry for her being locked up in a zoo. It's no life for a wild animal. So we'd help her get out of the cage and find the railway station where she could take the first train back to her homeland. Then we'd wander through the streets in the early morning. We'd buy fresh bread rolls to eat and climb up on the rooftops to play with the cats and watch the sunrise. When we got home, our parents would be so happy to see us. We'd yawn and say, we're much too tired to go to school today. They'd feel bad because it was their fault that the monster had kidnapped us in the first place. So they'd let us stay at home and eat cakes all day. And more importantly, they'd have learned their lesson. They'd never say, go and play with that little boy ever again. We'd be allowed to play on our own if we wanted. And we'd make new friends when we wanted to, 
and not just because our parents told us to. Because you never know who you might meet at the park. You could be saying hello to a monster. <laughs> and that is the end of Hello Monster by Clementine Beauvoir and Macy Paradise Shearing.